your word and that lord everyone under the sound of my voice will be blessed and encouraged and assisted in jesus name amen and amen <clears throat> hallelujah glory to god this is the fourth class and um, <laughs> i'm sure for some of you it's already taking its toll but we want to bless god i believe that this investment and this effort we are making is going to yield the peaceable fruits of righteousness. So I want you to uh, not mind distress. I know some of you are tired. I am particularly tired. Between last night and today, I've preached four times. So um, uh, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Today, I want to look into the topic that we call, that I've titled, How to Receive Revelation from the Holy Spirit. It's one thing for you to be, to be gifted. It's one thing for you to be blessed. But do you know how to get information? When the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, do you know exactly how he talks to you? Because at the end of the day, these are the things that we bring together and crystallizes into what we call a prophecy. So whether you are prophesying in a service under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, or whether God gives you a dream, a prophetic dream, about a particular situation uh, or maybe a revelation or a visual impression, you need to be able to identify how God speaks to you. Hallelujah. So I want to first of all read from Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, and I will read from here. The scripture says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I read again, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If, now, what that scripture means is that there is a difference between a son and a spiritual child. There is a difference between a child and a son. A, a, a son is someone that is matured, matured enough to uh, hear the voice of God and to be able to identify it. A spiritual child may most likely, like Samuel, hear the voice of his spiritual father. And I, please, I want you to get me very clearly. Sometimes you hear God, it looks like you are hearing this, the voice of your spiritual father or somebody that you really respect. Uh, even in, in scriptures, when Jesus taught us about the good shepherd, he said the good uh, shepherd cares for the sheep. So the sheep follow the Lord. They follow the voice of the Lord. But in that story of Bible Jesus gave us, the lambs, the small ones, they follow the sheep. And that is why it's very important for you to attend a godly church. Not just a church, simply because you have been there for a hundred years. No. You have to be in a church that is meant for that season for you. For instance, if you, well, with your respect, but it's important for you to uh, attend a church that helps you become your be the best version of yourself as far as God is concerned. You should not be in a church uh, for a long time where all they do is they feed you and encourage you to be on life support machines where you cannot even fix basic issues that you may be going through. So that is why the issue of being led by the Holy Spirit is so important. You have to take these things as if your life depends on them. Some of the things that we have learned and we, have, we are sharing with you now, they came out of a sincere and uh, dire need to know the mind of God. Because when you are in a place and people are just dying, when things are happening and you really can't explain um, why these things are happening. And I have, I've had a lot of pain. Uh, let me share a very bitter experience with you. Um, when my sister, one of my sisters was going to get married, um, she, she had met this young man when she was, uh, you know, doing a, a youth service call. And the guy, really cool guy, very handsome. I mean, you probably won't want to hear God when you see him because he really looks good, you know. And, um, you know, they got married. Long and short of the story, somehow, because... We've had, you know, major deaths in my family. Like when my father went on to be with the Lord, I was just in um, SS1 when my father passed. So since the time my father passed, 
And this particular time when our, the first child of the house was, um, was you know, get, wanting to get married, we've not really had so much good news in the family. So it, it, it really felt like a, like a good thing. We, it was just like, ah, let's have a wedding, let's have a wedding. You know, we need, um, we need something to, you know, you know, spice up the atmosphere. It's been years of battle, years of turmoil. So I didn't pray about it. I didn't pray about it. Uh, and that's why I keep saying to people, one of the greatest enemies to your prophetic gift is your emotions. If you don't learn how to put your emotions under alignment and under the will of God, you will keep hearing wrong things. And even when God is speaking, you will not have the ability to discern it. And this is very basic, but intensely powerful. I didn't pray about it because I didn't just want to, you know, start praying and then maybe I now see something and then God is saying, no, they should not marry. And then, you know, the whole thing becomes a huge mess. Long and short of the story is that the young man died just a year after. And it was... I, <laughs> It was a very painful. It was a very painful time. They had, they had just a child. It was very painful because I, it was as if I was asking God, why didn't you say anything? But somehow in my heart, I felt guilty. I felt guilty. I was like, okay, you are helping people. A lot of people out there. You are you are you are hearing God for them. God is using you to bless people, and you can't even help your own sister. So believe me, we are, we are not doing prophetic school for fancy. Your life can depend on it. Your life can depend on hearing God. And nobody is going to hear God for you. It is this degree of seriousness that you pay to these things that delivers to you. you know? And even now, I cannot say that I hear God all the time. But I have known a bit to be able to say, I want to share a few things with you. Now, by the time my second sister was getting married, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't wait. I, I prayed and I heard God. The young man was not a Yoruba man. And my mom was a bit concerned. But because I heard God, I, I told my mom, Mama, you need to stand down on this. You need to stand down. Now they've been married for maybe 15 years now, they're about or something close to that, and they are fine. Don't be afraid to know what God is saying. Don't be afraid that, oh, maybe if God speaks, I won't, I won't like what he will say. It is those that are led by the Spirit of God that can claim to be sons of God. Not every other person is a spiritual baby. And I can share with you other experiences, but these were the things that made me realize I could not live my life, I could not gamble my life based on what I think is right as against what God is saying. And that's why, you know, when my mom is a pastor every day, and to be sincere, she's, she's awesome. She does the best she, you know, our generation has a certain mindset and she's fine there. She's almost 70. I mean, she's, she's fine. That generation, you can't, some of these things I'm sharing now, they can't, they can't accept it. Very few. That's why it's easy for us to just pack our bags and show up in a particular program once every month because it's convenient. We are used to that thing, but our own generation is saying everybody can work in this thing. And unless you believe what I'm saying to you, you may not appreciate the depth of uh, what, I am, what, what we are saying here. If you've never experienced some intense pain that was avoidable, you may not be able to appreciate the depth of what I'm saying here, you will just say, it's good to hear God, it's good to hear God. But you will never appreciate it because you've, you've never been beaten by the snake. Many people are having issues because of their emotions. Most people are having issues again because of fear. Many people are afraid of what God will say. And as I'm talking, I want you to be, you know, going over these things in your mind and asking yourself where you really fall into. That may be somewhere in your heart the, the thought of even hear, not hearing God properly is what is even making you not hear God. Or the thought of, you know, making a mistake is probably what is 
hindering you from receiving revelation directly from God. And most times God has to send people to you. And there's nothing wrong with God sending people to you, but you should have your own way of hearing God. Hallelujah. So many, fear has caused many people to pull back uh, because they don't understand the basic operations of receiving revelation. Now, every saint will be able to hear God on different levels. But most of the times, you will have at least one or, or two ways of, of hearing God majorly. For some people, it's going to be dreams and hearing God's voice in the, by the ears. For others, it's going to be maybe dreams and visions. You, you have at least one that seems to be more consistent. For most of us in this part of the world, it's actually dreams. And that's why next weekend, we are going to be looking at dreams. And you really, really don't want to miss that class. You really, really don't want to miss that class. Now, I want to read, before I begin to explain some of these things, I want to read some scriptures, and I want you to write them down. And then maybe later you can go over them um, on your own. I want to read Ecclesiastes. Where is Ecclesiastes here? Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And verse 14. Please, I want you to write these scriptures down, even if you can't read it now. Write these scriptures down. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And I myself perceive also that one event happens to them. Now, what does the scripture say about the wise man's eyes? They are in his head. That means that the, a wise man is able to perceive things in his heart, in his spirit, without necessarily you know, having to have a dream. Okay? But the man whose eyes are not in his head, he walks in darkness. That means that that kind of man lacks the power of perception. Okay? And I'm talking about perception here. Let's read John chapter 14 and verse 27. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Look at what Jesus said. He said, My peace I live with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world giveth, give unto you, so let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, I've, I've shared two things with you now. The first thing is that the, the, ability, the ability of your spirit to interface with divine reality, they can happen in your spirit, inside your head, inside your heart, in your mind, when nobody can really see what's going on inside of you. But those transactions can happen there. And if you don't understand that these things are possible, then you will, not, you will miss out on a lot of uh, information that is bringing to you. Some people always want to wait to dream. Why well, I am a dreamer, but I can say to you that a lot of times, you don't need to sleep to what God is saying. So that the wise man's head, they are open inside. They can perceive if as they come in and out. Then Jesus also said, one of the gifts given to you is the gift of peace. Is what we call the inner witness, the ability to read the mind of God by the peace thermometer, by the peace thermometer. When you are praying and you are asking God, should I travel or not? And then after praying, you know, I just notice that ah, this thing doesn't seem to settle down. That is God using the peace thermometer to tell you that you are not you are not free to go, so you stay back. Okay, let's all read another scripture first somewhere. I'm reading these scriptures because by the time I start saying something, so that you won't think I'm an occultic. So that's why I'm reading all these scriptures. First Samuel chapter 3 and verse 8. And the Lord called Samuel again, the third time, and he arose and went to Eli. He said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived, look at the word perceived. Eli perceived that the Lord has called the child. Again, I want to uh, push to you that one of the primary ways of receiving revelation is by perception. So I want you to please note that in your book. First Kings chapter 4 and verse 9. First Kings chapter 4 and verse 9. Um, okay, I think I mixed that up somewhere. I will get that. Let's move to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 and verse, verse 22. Luke chapter 5 and verse 22. 
But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, did you see the word perceived? Jesus, one of the primary ways Jesus heard God was by perception. Information downloaded in the spirit and then he's able to discern them or be, uh, he's able to you know, sense that information. Not necessarily by hearing voices. Not necessarily, not necessarily by hearing voices, but by discernment, by perception. Okay? And that's, that's one of the things uh, that I want to share with you in this meeting. Now look at uh, Luke chapter 20 and verse 23. Luke chapter 20 and verse 23. But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Why tempt ye me? Jesus was uh, speaking, about, uh, speaking to the Pharisees and the scribes. And he, come, he, he rebuked them and said, why are, you, why are you trying to tempt me? Jesus didn't hear a voice, you know, saying, he also didn't hear a voice saying, oh, my son, they are trying to deceive you. You must be very careful. What Jesus perceived in the spirit. And for many of us as prophets, that is how we hear God. We perceive things in our spirit. And we are, by the time you start sharing it to the person, the person is confirming them. And both of you are surprised because it just came into your, um, into your heart like a thought. Like as if you are thinking. But it was the Lord putting those things in your heart. So this is very important. Uh, you need to purify your thought life for this activity to be very strong in your life. Because in your thoughts, the devil also speaks to you. God speaks to you. And even your own mind talks to you. So for this channel, this channel is open to three layers of, uh, uh, of authority. So you need to purify your heart, or sorry, your thought life, by constantly meditating on the word of God and yielding your thoughts to the authority of the word of God and the influence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, I want to show you the condition of most prophetic people. Look at Isaiah chapter 42. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 42. Verse 19. 19 and 20. Look at the condition of most prophetic people. Who is blind but my servant? Who is deaf as my messenger that I sent? And who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? Look at verse 20, which is where I'm going. Seen many things, but thou observest not. Look at how God is speaking here. That I show you many things. I show you many things. Sometimes you are talking to your colleague in the office and the person is just rattling on about other colleagues in the office and you do not observe that God is telling you that this person is a gossip. Don't share information with her. He said, seeing many things, yet you do not observe. Opening the ears, yet you don't hear. Because some of us are thinking, that, hey, you are not talking, you are not talking. Many times when prophetic people tell you this is what God is saying, it was not every time they heard voices. These are the operations that they've developed over time and they mastered it to a degree and they are able to flow in it. Hallelujah. We should know, now let me say this and please put this down. Go. We should know that apart from these advanced methods, like, uh, you know, there are some advanced methods of revelation, like open vision, trances, audible voices. Those ones are for senior, senior people, senior prophets like you. But there are many people and many of us here that would never really have any business um, with trances and visions because God is not really so keen about some of these mediums of passing revelation as much as he's keen on you getting the right message. Hallelujah. So we should so apart from all these open vision trances, almost every other operation, almost every other operation happens within our spirit. Please Note what I'm saying. Apart from audible voices, open vision, trances, these are high-level um, prophetic operations. Every other operation in the prophetic happens inside your spirit. And it 
flows through your mind for processing. Let me repeat. It happens inside your spirit and flows into your mind for processing. That is why the, you, you cannot really hear God without your mind. You cannot really hear God without your mind. Because your mind is where the information will be processed, you, you know, and you'll be able to interpret it in language. And that is why, for instance, and I have this very good example, if somebody was prophesying, um, if somebody was, you know, moved by the spirit of prophecy, and he was, you know, going to prophesy, and he came to Lagos, but uh, he, the only language he understands is from Baramutu Kingdom, or uh, from, it's from North Korea, sorry, South Korea, and he doesn't uh, speak English. Then you hear she sha or she on ki on kaki ke is is speaking his language. God is saying something, but nobody understands she sha or ji on koni shahi fafa. By the time he speaks that, we say amen, but we don't know what he's saying. That is what happens when God downloads into your spirit. Your spirit understands spirit language. Your spirit doesn't speak English. Your spirit speaks God. Your spirit doesn't speak English. Your spirit speaks God. So your mind needs to take that information and process it by the help of the Holy Spirit into words that you can understand. So that time that you thought you were hearing God was not when you heard God. You heard God before you knew it. Please stay with me. I need to be very fast. The primary tools for this type of operations are your imagination and your thoughts. Imagination focuses on images and pictures. That is why sometimes you are praying, you see some of these pictures in your mind. You know, sometimes it flashes across your face in your mind's eye. You, those are pictures that the Holy Spirit is creating to uh, give you certain kinds of uh, revelation knowledge. Or certain thoughts begin to come into your mind. And that is why when you are praying, if you really, really want to pray, you need to have your notebook beside you. Or have your iPad or something where you can write. You know, as God is putting these things into your heart. Then after your prayer, you can go back and review them. There's a way many of us behave sometimes. Even God is not interested in talking because you are not really going to remember after that time. Hallelujah. The primary tools for operation within this area is actually your imagination and your thoughts. Please, as you ask, as you get your questions, continue to post them. When your thought life and your imagination is sanctified, they can become powerful tools for revelation. When your thought life and your imagination is sanctified, they can become extremely powerful tools for revelation. Now, I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12. 12, I believe, from verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Please put down these scriptures uh, so you can go over them later. It says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Please note that word, diversities. That means there are different types of spiritual gifts but they are uh, they, they are controlled and you know given out by the same Holy Spirit. So it is wrong for somebody who has an ability to uh, say prophesy to look down on somebody who just speaks in diverse tongues. Okay, and I've seen people and I've listened to people who their pri primary gift in the prophetic is the interpretation of dreams. There are people whose primary gift in the prophetic is the interpretation of tongues. They don't prophesy, they don't you know, do other things like that. But when you speak in diverse tongues, their ears open and they know what you are saying. So it, you, there is no room for, uh, we are the senior prophets, you are the junior prophets. No, 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 there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. So we are one family working together. It says, and there are, verse 5, and there are differences of administration but the same Lord. Differences of administration, but the same Lord. Look at verse 6. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God that is working. What, what does this mean? What this means is that there are, the way I prophesy may not necessarily be the way uh, my friends, you know, one or any of my friends 
would prophesy, or even you listening to me. But it is still God. You know, way back when I first started prophesying, there's a way people used to prophesy, and if you can see my screen, you will see things like, just look at me, you see things like, you are supposed to vibrate back and forth. Nobody told us to vibrate, but that's the way we saw them doing it. So you vibrate back and forth. Then you speak in tongues for a long time. Then later you start, you know, as if you are interpreting, you now begin to speak in English. Interpreting, you now everything like, my children, I am in your midst. I am the Lord of all. And you see this person crying, an able bodied man yes. <laughs> with three children. He will be crying. People be like, ah, everybody will be quiet, you know, and all of that. So the time when we now started prophesying, it was just natural for us to do what we saw others doing. But what's the scripture saying? There are diversities of operation. Somebody is saying the last scripture, I'm, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 4 to 6. There are diversities of operation. That means every prophet is unique. Sometimes you may see, you know, some people prophesy in symbols, some people prophesy in parables. So if you don't understand symbols and parables, you won't know the meaning. Other people just tell you there's something happening at your back, you have a back pain, you'll be having certain dreams, the Lord is going to set you free, blah, 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 blah. For instance, as I'm sharing with you now, there's, there's, there's somebody now uh, on, this, um, on this Zoom class now. You've been having dreams of premature death, you know, people dying around you and all of that. Recently, I'm talking about recently, and God is talking to me that I don't even know who I'm talking to, but the person is in this meeting. So if you are the one, you chat me up after this meeting. I want to pray for you. Okay? Now, you want to ask me how I heard <laughs> what I just said. <laughs> Amen. So there are diversities of operation. Diversities of... So you need to understand the one, try to study yourself and see the ones that are very frequent. Very frequent with you. This is so important. But, oh my God, I'm really taking a lot of time today. And I have quite a bit. Um, so we are all going to experience the same power of God, but we are going to experience it in different ways. Now, some of you are still asking, whether, you know, information coming to your imagination or to your thoughts, whether they are actually real. I want to show you something in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Let's look at verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down with imaginations. Satan operates at the level of imaginations also. And every eye thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing it into captivity, every thought. At the beginning of verse 5, you saw imagination. At the end of that same verse 5, you saw thought. If Satan can speak at that level, God can speak at that level. And that's why you saw Jesus saying, the scripture talk about that Jesus perceived the thoughts of the people. Jesus perceived what people were thinking. He perceived the thoughts of the Pharisees and answered them by their thoughts. Why? Because that realm is open to all kinds of spiritual influences. So you need to shut your own mind and your imagination to, the, to Satan and open it to the Holy Spirit so that your imagination and your thought life can become a tool for the Holy Spirit to bless people and not to be imagining vain things. Praise God. Mm. So you can, you can have trust. That's why Jesus said, if you think lustfully about a lady in your mind, you slept with her. So as far as Jesus is concerned, transactions within the thought realm are valid transactions. You can hear God there. You can kill a person there. And they'll put it against your name that you've killed somebody. What are red flags? Let's talk about red flags very briefly. What are red flags? Uh, you know, these are just like pointers that you put your, you know, on a lot when you see people are trying to prophesy or and you are not very comfortable. Number one, be, be very careful if you see somebody who is trying to prophesy to you but it's a lone ranger. It's not connected to the body of Christ. There's a particular, in quotes, prophet in the early 90s, somewhere around Lagos, I think, I won't call the area, but some of you know he keeps BS like this. It's not a very fine boy, but somewhere, you know, uh, somewhere with an I, letter I, IK, somewhere in Lagos here. Yeah. When this guy started ministering in, uh, in Ikotun, 
the guy was looking very weird, but um, th there's the issue many people had with him was that he was a low ninja. He didn't relate with others who he met. And everybody who divides the body of Christ cannot be a servant of Christ. Everybody who divides the body of Christ cannot be a servant of Christ. So watch out for people that have low ninja spirit. They don't respect anybody. They, don't, they are always by themselves and they are giving revelation. They may be operating by familiar spirit. Number two, when you see a minister does, that does not have regard for God's word, he just wants to prophesy everything, prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. He doesn't have regard for God's word. You know, <laughs> that is a very powerful um, red flag. And I hope you are writing this down. When you see a minister, all he wants to do, so even when you are not in the spirit, you will force the prophecy to happen. People must fall under the anointing. You see, people must prophesy. If the thing is not there, why don't you just preach the word and move on? If you have a dream about somebody and the dream is not, don't try to finish the dream for the person. Just tell the person what you saw and let the person go and pray. You don't need to, you, you don't need to have all the answers. That's what I'm saying. That's a red flag. When you see a minister that's always talking about miracle, uh, signs and wonders, prophecy, but he doesn't teach God's word. He has, or tells you like, what is there? You have been reading Bible all these days. Uh, uh, as your life changed, I want to miracle you now. I want to give you prophetic word now. Hmm. You find this thing in Nigeria a lot. A lot of people who just focus on prophecy, supernatural. And I can tell you this because I'm a prophet. They are getting it wrong. And don't be deceived. Don't use wrong people as your models. For you to be a prophet, you must first have a call to the ministry to preach and teach God's word. That is the first thing. Hmm. When, another red flag. When you see ministers that monetize the gospel or monetize prophet, prophecy, eh, they want you to they want you to you know sow a seed before they will give you a word. Uh, one of my friends recently in the southwest here is a pastor. But you know, many times we have people that don't respect, you know, if your husband is a pastor or a prophet, you don't respect your husband. You prefer to go and look for the one on the mountain. So this lady went out with her friend and she saw another prophet um, on one mountain, you know, those prophets that have no signboard, but they, they are there. Okay. So the prophet told her one thing. You have a red bag in your house. You have a red bag. You have one uh, wig, one wig that is very long. <laughs> hey, sometimes uh, when I see, when I, when I hear prophets, I, I'm surprised that I'm still a prophet because I see all those, uh, <laughs> those are <original. laughs> Oh boy. So the, the lady said, yes, 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 I have the red bag, I have the black bag, I have red shoes, I have brown shoes. <laughs> Which lady does he have black, red, brown, gold? <laughs> is your thing. You can't, it's not a prophecy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so the, 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 then the prophet now said to her that, look, for me to tell you more things, you need to sow a seed. <laughs> so that's where the trouble started. <laughs> okay. So when you see people that they don't complete their revelation until you sow a seed, they are either operating by familiar spirit or they are about to get into trouble. When you see a prophet that always talks about himself and not Jesus, that's a red flag. When you see a prophet that always talks about himself and not Jesus, when I was in Toronto, people were carrying my leg, people were carrying my shoe, people were doing this, people were doing that. No, no spiritual element to the story. It's always about him. Hmm. You are looking at a false prophet. So when you see a prophet that lives a loose lifestyle, loose life, lifestyle, and this is not just about fornication and adultery. Shine, shine, bobo. Eh? Shine, shine, bobo. It's a red flag. This particular point I'm making now doesn't mean the man may not be caught, but he's a very careless person. And you also have to check those things in your heart. You know, I know pastors like wearing shine, shine colors, you know. Pastors like to be loud, like music stars. But these are things you look at. You don't need that Jericho. That's what I'm telling you. I say, if you're a male prophet, you don't need the, you don't need that Jericho on your head. You need to keep it low. 
You don't need so many things that people make you feel. You can carry your own Bible. Praise God. You can carry your own Bible. <laughs> you can, you don't worry. You can, once you still have the hand, you can eat. Nobody is feeding you, so carry your Bible. Choose to live your life in such a way that it is easy for you to know when you are deviating. Hmm. Don't live a loose lifestyle. Don't spend money anyhow. Don't go on a, don't be an Instagram pastor or prophet. Don't be a Gucci prophet. You go on a Instagram or Facebook and be doing money like this. Uh, and there's one song we used to sing like that in Yoruba. One of these secular music. Oh, 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 something, something about money. And when you see, again, like I mentioned, if you see someone that evaluates the, uh, the gift above the word of God, Another point, when you see a prophet that does not allow uh, anyone to judge them, they are not accountable to anyone. Their prophecy is their prophecy. That's a red flag. When you see a prophet that has no spiritual covering, you don't know who he follows, you don't know who he respects, that's another red flag. Because the day is going to take you to a mountain, or sorry, to a river to bait for you. Nobody will be there to, you can't report him. Okay, then when you see a prophet that is um, unnecessarily emotional, it's only he applies emotional techniques to minister to you. That's a red flag. Then when he uses odd methods, odd methods, odd methods, come and come and uh, sleep inside the church for seven days. We will we'll put you under spiritual protection. So. I can deliver you odd methods, emotional techniques. When people, when a minister applies unnecessarily to your emotions to get your to get your attention, he tries to wind you emotionally to make you feel like ah, it's a spirit husband. Ah. Am I saying there are no spirit husbands? No, they are. But you don't need to be unnecessarily emotional. Just tell us what God says. And listen to me, because the prophetic realm is very diverse, you have to be sensitive in the spirit to detect error. The prophetic realm is very open. It's like uh, the entire United States. So if you are not sensitive in the spirit, every time you receive a word, be sensitive first. Pay attention to that revelation for you to be able to get the blessing um, uh, out, of, out of that uh, revelation. Please understand that a believer can pro prophesy out of his mind, and it's not God that is talking. A believer can prophesy out of his mind and it is not even God that is talking. What are the ways we can receive revelation? Please just give me about 10 more minutes. Eh? What are the ways we can receive revelation? Basically, all revelation is received in the human spirit as the primary recipient. All revelation is received in the human spirit as the primary recipient. The, your spirit is the part of you that can flow at God's level. Your spirit is that part of you. Your spirit is the part of you that can flow at God's level because it bears the same element of creation with God. And that's found in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where God made man out of the breath of his nostrils. Hallelujah. But please understand that our spirits are crafted uniquely, and that is why some of us, we hear voices, we hear God's voice more than we see. Why others see more than they hear? Hallelujah. None of these methods, whether you are a seer or you are a hearer, none of them are more superior than the others. The most important thing is that we get what the Holy Spirit is saying to us clearly. Please continue to post your, your questions. What are the ways of receiving revelation? Number one, through the auditory channels. That includes audible voice. I will receive revelation. Audible voice. Impressions. When something is impressed strongly in your spirit and you can't shake it off, God may be saying something to you. No use. You just suddenly know. Okay? Sometimes I look at people and I know their names and I don't know them before. I just know it. It's, it's, an, it's a manifestation of prophetic. You just know things. And people ask you, how did you know? You say, I just know. I don't know. There's also the operation of the still small voice. Then you also have the conscience, your conscience. You can read Jeremiah 29, 11, Genesis 3, 8, John chapter 10 and verse 27. Now we also talk about ways of receiving revelation. We'll talk about visual channels. 
This includes trances, open visions, closed visions, visual impressions. Those are visions you see in your heart when praying. Uh, okay, I was reading the scripture. I said Jeremiah 29, 11, Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, and John chapter 10 and verse 27. So you also have open visions, dreams. Dreams come into the category of, uh, of visual, visual channels. You have trances, you have visual impressions, you have closed vision. And you can write Acts chapter 10, verse 3. Acts chapter 10, verse 3. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 26. Acts chapter 10, 11 to 15. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 26. Acts chapter 10, 11 to 15. Then we also have strong, listen to this one, strong feelers. People just feel, there are some people that feel things, okay? Sometimes I walk into a particular building and I just feel the presence of angels there. I just feel it very strongly. You come into a particular building or in a particular home, you can feel the peace of God. It's as if the peace of God is around, it's just hugging you. You come into some place, you can feel the depression. There are people that their natural wiring is, they are, they are feelers. They feel things very powerfully. They feel things very powerfully. They are very sensitive. If there's somebody that is depressed, they know it. What are the other ways? So those are three channels I've given you. The other ways is by the written word of God. We receive revelation by Rema when we study the word of God. When we study the word of God, we hear God. We also can receive revelations by circumstance and by timing. You know, something happens. You can read Acts chapter 18 and verse... Uh, let me see. Acts chapter 18 from verse 1 to 3. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come, to it, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and walked. For by the occupation, they were tent makers. Now, God, what, let me explain how this applies to what I'm saying. Paul was doing his own things. Apollos and Priscilla were doing their own things. But by some kind of circumstance, God brought them together. God didn't say, my son, my son, I want you to relate with Aquila. God just allowed certain circumstances to play out. And the timing was such that it was, wow, that this month is just like, you know, it was like a divine connection. It was like a divine connection. And it's just like sometimes you meet somebody and just like, wow, God must have sent this person to me. You, you just know it in your heart because after you spoke to that person, you knew that God put your, this person into your life. So it's a revelation you receive, but it didn't happen by hearing a voice. It happened by God orchestrating the circumstance. Now, please hear me. Knowing the voice of God requires or let me put it this way, discerning the voice of God, because God's voice is always there. But discerning the voice of God requires close association with the Lord. Re Please hear me. Knowing the voice or discerning the voice of the Lord doesn't just happen when you are watching a Korean film. And it, just, it doesn't just happen when you are always going to all the nice eateries and taking pictures. It requires a deliberate development of your relationship with God. For you to be able to know. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know it. They didn't know it by trying to know it. They knew the voice by hanging around the shepherd. So it doesn't matter where the guy is coming from. It doesn't matter how many flowers he's buying, he's buying and sending to your office. The guy may still not be the will of God. But the only way you can sense it in your heart is when you are close enough to the Lord and you see that this person is not really who he says he is. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 18. You shall hear a voice behind you telling you this is the way, this is the right way, walk in it. You shall receive, you shall hear a voice behind you telling you this is the voice uh, that you, should, you need to walk in. Now, again, like I shared with you, um, uh, I don't know. Let me check Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. You can put that down. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. For the Spirit himself 
bear it witness with our spirit. Do you see how God speaks to us? This is the primary way God speaks to us. It gives you a witness. It confirms to you that this thing that is happening, God is saying something. Oh, this person you just met, you know, it's not a coincidence. God is bringing you, two of you together. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. How do you know how the, do you know inner witness works? Is that the way you know that you are born again? That's how the inner witness works. When you gave your life to Christ and then in your spirit, you just knew it, that I'm not a child of God. And since then you've been following the Lord. That is how the inner witness works. So this is a, the inner witness is a feeling that has a spiritual connotation. The inner witness is a feeling that has a spiritual connotation. It has a spiritual connotation. So you can feel God's power in your body. You can feel God. You can even feel pain. You know, sometimes you are praying for the sick and then you can feel a sharp pain on your shoulder. And for those of us who are praying in the healing ministry, it is a sign from God that there's somebody that has a pain around that place. And you need to be able to understand this so that uh, maybe, maybe one of these days after prophetic school, they could come around for three days and look at the healing anointing. For those of you who operate in the healing anointing or you want to develop in it, you could come around for three days and x-ray the healing anointing. So please let me know if you want that. It's uh, based on popular vote. So the word of God. The word of God, this is known as the revealed word of God by... Uh, out of that comes out of the written word of God. This is the revealed word that comes out of the written word. There is no true prophet, whether a full-blown prophet, that will negate the word of God. The Bible itself is the primary book of, of prophecy. It may not sound exciting. You know, you prefer to see vision and hear voices. But I tell you, there is no genuine prophet that will not tell you to study your, the Bible if you want to grow prophetically. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, let me give you a few notes, then I can take your question. I'm, I'm, this is the last page. I'll just keep a few other things. Uh, now, <laughs> I was watching a film. I was watching a film, and it was um, a Chinese film. And the master or who was training the young, you know, Proteges said to one of them, He said, You are gifted. He said, But you are lazy. He said, You are gifted. I, I'm saying it, I'm paraphrasing. He said, But this is what he meant. You are gifted, but you are lazy. That mastering, mastering divine, uh, divine spiritual things require discipline, require take time before you can gain mastery. You also, do, you also need to learn not just how to hear God, but the different traps that Satan can set for you so that you don't fall into the man. Some of those things are some of the things I've mentioned. You know, being a lone ranger, uh, becoming a sensational, you like things that are sensational, people, you know, shouting your name here and there, you behave like a superstar. If you're a prophet, you cannot be a superstar. You can be a music star, but you can't be a superstar. So as you, what I'm saying to you is that what, whatever level you are in now, you can grow in them, you can become better, and you can develop in it. The key word here is develop. It will not happen overnight. It will not happen overnight, but you can develop, um, you can develop these things by paying attention to them. Listen to me. If you, st if you start learning how to pray in tongues, you know, regularly. Like say you are praying one hour in tongues. You weren't doing that before. You now start praying one hour in tongues every day. You will not immediately see the result. After some time, maybe like a month or so, you just begin to notice that something has changed about you. Your ability, something has changed. Your wiring is changing. If you do vigils at night, after some time, you realize that your capacity to deliver the word of God is even more powerful. Why? Because you've been waiting on God consistently. So don't look for a magic wand. And that is why on our, on the eighth class, uh, on our eighth class, I will not teach so much. If we have questions, I will take questions. If you have suggestions about 
other things you want me to teach about, I will allow you for the first 10 minutes or 15. So I, I'm going to say, I'm going to get feedback from you. Then we are going to spend the most part of that eight class praying on, on this, on this um, uh, on, online here. So I'm going to spend the eight class praying together, praying, praying, and I'll give you some prayer points. And you are going to pray out of the depth of your heart. Because there are some of you now, you are, there's somebody you are, let me not even start over time. The, there's somebody now that is looking at me now. Okay? There's somebody that's looking at me now. And right now, you are going to church, you are doing a lot of things, but you know sincerely within your heart that despite all you are doing for God, your life has no direction. So you need to be in that prayer meeting. We are going to pray some very dangerous prayers on the eighth class, and that is, that's how we are going to close this class. God bless you. I want to open hand over back to our coordinator, and then we can take questions. So question time. God bless you.